Well, the good news is the British Empire has fallen apart. The bad news is the Tories are going to try to use the collapse of their empire to punish working class people. The Tories want to use Brexit to create a bargain basement economy where working class people are paid next to nothing, where homelessness skyrockets, where public services are slashed and public sector jobs are cut. But the hardline element in the Tory party also wants to impose a hard border on the people of Ireland. We're stuck between two power blocks who have fallen out. On one side, you've got the Tory aristocratic scumbags, eaten educated toffs whose ancestors pillaged the entire world to create a mountain of wealth. You see that aristocratic scumbag, Rhys Mogg, lounging in Parliament because they have contempt for democracy, because their families have always been rich and they've always ruled the world. But now their empire is falling apart and the new empire, the EU, is going to scrap them over the spoils. I mean, the EU present themselves as humanitarians and they've got some slick PR, but these are the people that imposed a 64 billion banking debt on the Irish people and signed us up to treaties like the Fiscal Treaty that banned spending on things like social housing that we kind of need. Both sides don't give a damn about working class people in Ireland, north or south. But the debate about a hard border and what to do about a hard border opens up a debate about a united Ireland. More people than ever when asked in polls, say they would vote for a united Ireland if there was a border poll. And the breakup of the British Empire is a good thing. I mean, if the Scottish people vote for independence, that just helps us make an even stronger case for uniting Ireland. The weakening of Britain is the weakening of one of the most reprehensible imperialist and warmongering states the world has ever seen. Weakening the Anglo-American alliance and their ability to drop bombs or kill half a million people in Iraq or to hold on to the north of Ireland. That weakening is a good thing, not only for working class people here, but for working class people all over the world. If they do impose a hard border, we have to mobilise people on the streets of Dublin and Derry. Belfast and Cork. We have to march up to border posts and use civil disobedience and mass numbers to dismantle those border posts and say, we're not accepting this. And you've got to ask yourself why. Why is Varadkar not standing up for the people of Ireland? He doesn't seem willing to stand up to the Tories or to stand up to his mates in the EU. But then again, Varadkar's another snob who doesn't give a damn about working class people. In a way, whether we end up with a hard or a soft border, the border has to go because it's always been about dividing the working class, weakening the working class, keeping the working class north and south on its knees. The border was about imposing two reactionary states, the sectarian Orange State in the north and the Catholic anti-worker state of De Valera and Archbishop McQuaid in the south. Both states mirror images of each other. It was James Connolly, the great Irish socialist, who said if we allowed them to put in a border, it would create a carnival of reaction. So how else would you describe the last seven or eight decades of Irish politics, North and South? Connolly saw that a divided working class would be wed to its ruling class, North and South. The orange bosses would tie the Protestant working class to their apron strings in the North, and the working class in the South would be beaten down by the church and the corruption of the establishment parties. It took an uprising of the people to get the partial freedom that we won from the empire. Not only the rising in 1916 when people like James Connolly died to go into the GPO, but also the War of Independence from 1918 to 1923, where working class people had mass strikes, a general strike in Belfast, a general strike in Dublin, where the workers of Limerick took over the running of the city for two months, where hundreds of creameries across the country were taken over by the working class. It was that radicalism that brought the British Empire to its knees. They knew they had to put the radicalism of the Irish working class back in a box. A general strike in Belfast, a general strike in Dublin, you can't have that. Not only is that a threat to the empire, but it was a threat to the bosses in the north and the bosses in the south. So the bosses in the north, with the cooperation of the British Empire, wanted to form a little orange sectarian state that would oppress Catholics, but by oppressing Catholics, also keep Protestant workers under control. And in the south, the people that led the liberation movement weren't socialists like Connolly. He was long dead. It was reactionaries and conservatives like Kevin O'Higgins, who said, we have to bring this period of revolution to an end. And they brought it to an end, 
by beating us down and by using the church. So the orange bigots, the Catholic hierarchy, the wealthy on both sides of the border and the aristocrats who ran the British Empire conspired to divide this country in two, to keep us down. So you don't have to be a nationalist to stand up for the unity of this country and the unity of the working class. All workers are left behind in a tax haven economy. So we can't just incorporate the North into the tax haven economy of the South. As Connolly said, you can't just change the flag without also changing the social and economic situation of working class people. We need to demand the border poll. We need to demand that the border go. We need to fight with mass civil disobedience if they try and impose border posts. But most of all, we have to fight for a socialist Ireland. And uniting the working class in this country is a step towards that socialist Ireland. A step towards Connolly's vision. And a step towards ending the decades-long carnival of reaction.